Footscray's Scotty Wine to become the fifth blonde ruckman to win football's greatest accolade. With 145 goals, Jason Dunstall might well become the second full forward to take the honours. Many have won, more than once. Tony Liberatore has plans to become the ninth multiple winner, while Dean Kemp and Adelaide's rugged skipper Chris McDermott hope to take their club's first medal. Fourteen captains have been honoured since 1925. All-Australian and Fitzroy leader Paul Ruse would like to become the 15th. Some have had long hair, others short, but Millam Hanna will create history of his own by becoming the first to win it with none. 74 medals have been awarded and seven have gone Collingwood's way. Mick McGuan might well make it eight for the Magpies. This is a night where the numbers count. There's the annual polling of votes for the most prestigious award in Australian football, the 1992 Charles Brownlow Medal. Joining the greats at the Southern Cross in Melbourne is Seven Sports' Bruce McAvaney. And hello from the Southern Cross. Well, the game has changed so much since Kaji Grease won the inaugural Brownlow Medal in 1924. And it was fitting a Geelong player should win. The Brownlow Medal is named in honour of a former famous Geelong administrator, Charles Brownlow. And over the years, almost 70 of them, there have been radical changes to the way the Brownlow has been decided and presented. But the honour remains the same. Every Brownlow medalist holds a special place in football history. And tonight, in a couple of hours' time, another name, or maybe one that's already there, will be on that distinguished list. Well, people say they know the winner of the Brownlow Medal before the count. It's impossible. The AFL auditors, the international accounting firm KPMG Pete Marwick, have once again supervised the removal of votes cast by the umpires from Armagard, where they've been accumulating throughout the season. Now, two of the firm's partners, Paul Shannon and Brian Jamison, are confident and satisfied that the umpires have had the, vote, the correct number of votes cast and that the votes are intact. And tonight they've been supervising those votes since they were removed from Armagard. Well, last year we had what we thought was a sure bet, uh, an overwhelming favourite, Jim Steins of Melbourne, and he won. This year is very different. It'll be no surprise if anyone up to ten men will be taking home Charlie with them tonight. So we've come to that time of the year. Coaches and players are gathered around here. The tension is high, the neckties are tight. All the way we take Charlie home tonight. Did Rusey catch the umpire's eye? This Scotty wide, ready to fly. Will Mickey McGuan take possession? He might. Or Harvey the same take Charlie home tonight. Who make the speech with a teardrop in his eye? Who take the medal that money just can't buy? champion celebration's gonna start who wear the brown of on his heart who's gonna take the brown away which players won the ride the champion will walk out of here take Charlie home tonight Dunstall, Atkins, Platten or Lowe will lock it or Steins take another brown road McDermott, Stoner, or Curnahan might Will Liver or Jarman take Charlie home tonight? Who will make a speech with a teardrop in his eye? Who will take the medal that money just can't buy? Who will be our champion? Celebration's gonna start.
and welcome to the Australis Room of the Southern Cross Hotel for the 1992 Brownlow Medal. And good luck to all the favourites who are amongst us tonight. And congratulations to the men past and present who have added so much to this great game. Not all the favourites are here tonight. The West Coast Eagles have been training tonight at Subiaco and as a team they're en masse in the President's Room there tonight. We wish them well. They'll be part of this telecast. We wish them good luck for Saturday as a team and good luck individually tonight. And there's a lone lion who's over in Los Angeles. We spoke with him earlier tonight on Seven Nightly News. Paul Ruse. Paul, you've had a magnificent season. He'll be watching this telecast tonight. We might be talking to you at the end of the night, Paul. He's marrying his American friend Tammy on October the 10th in New York. Pertie's going across to be his best man and a lot of the men who are here tonight will join him. Paul, congratulations. Good luck tonight, mate. We wish you well. Well, that song that we heard uh, just before the commercial break was from Eric Banner and Harry Nanos, a part of Power Team that was called Take Charlie Home Tonight. And the man who will be announcing the winner of the Brownlow Medal tonight is the chairman of the AFL Commission. It's my pleasure to welcome him here, Mr Ross Oakley. Ross. Well, good evening to everyone here in the Southern Cross Ballroom this evening and of course to everyone watching this count on TV. On behalf of the AFL Board of Directors, may I welcome you to this, the 65th count of the Charles Brownlow Medal. May I extend a very warm welcome to the Premier of Victoria, the Honourable Joan Kerner. Welcome, Joan. <laughs> may I also acknowledge the generosity of both Barry Fink, the Managing Director of the Southern Cross, and uh, Mr Bob Campbell and his wife Denise from the Seven Network for their kind support this evening. Together with our AFL corporate sponsor, Carlton and United Breweries, represented by their managing director tonight, Mr Pat Stone and Carol. Welcome to everyone and thank you. <laughs> Tonight's gathering is a properly constituted meeting of the AFL with all club directors or their alternates present. I'd like now to introduce the members of the counting team. Mr Dean Moore, AFL Special Projects Manager. <laughs> Mr Don Hanley, AFL Administration and Personnel Manager. <laughs> Mr Alan Swab, AFL Executive Commissioner. <laughs> Mr Gary Clayton, Waverley Park Manager. <laughs> and Mr Barry Capuano, General Manager, Football Operations. In accordance with AFL Rule 19, at the conclusion of each match, the two field umpires conferred and recorded their idea of the three fairest and best players in each of the 165 home and away matches played. The, the, the votes were then sealed in an envelope marked Brownlow Medal. In the case of two or more players receiving an equal number of votes, each shall be declared the joint winner and each of these players shall be awarded a Brownlow medal. Any player who has been found guilty of an offence in a home and away match, except for a time-wasting offence, shall be ineligible to receive the medal. Thanks, Bruce. Thank you, Ross. Ross Oakley, the uh, Chairman of the AFL Commission. Well, the season commenced way back on March the 21st. Eight teams were involved in the opening round. The showcase event, Hawthorne up against Geelong. Doesn't Jason Dunsell love playing against the Cats? Michael Tuck unfurled last year's Premiership pennant and looked on as the Hawks began 1992 where they left off on the same ground just six months earlier. After trailing Geelong by five goals, they bounced back to win by 20 points. The star, undoubtedly Jason Dunstall, who kicked a dozen just as he did against the Cats in round one, 1990. That night, Brisbane opened its account with three sizzling quarters under the Carrara lights before a total fade-out gave Carlton victory by four goals. Kernahan kicked five. The huge, noisy, parochial Adelaide crowd were quietened by Footscray. The Bulldogs were inspired by skipper Hawkins and upset the Crows by 27 points. 44,000 were at Waverley Park to see St Kilda end a 20-game losing streak against Essendon. Lockett was awesome with seven goals and Stuart Lowe took 18 grabs. The Saints by 17 points. Round one, Hawthorne versus Geelong. Geelong, M. Bairstow, one vote. 
Hawthorne, D. Jarman, two votes. Hawthorne, J. Dunstall, three votes. Brisbane versus Carlton. Carlton, S. Kernahan, one vote. Carlton, F. Brown, two votes. Brisbane, D. White, three votes. St Kilda versus Essendon. St Kilda, A. Fletcher, one vote. Essendon, D. Kickett, two votes. St Kilda, S. Lowe, three votes. Adelaide versus Footscray. Footscray, S. Collinyuk, one vote. Footscray, C. Grant, two votes. Footscray, D. Hawkins, three votes. Collingwood continued its winning streak against Brisbane with a 66-point win at Victoria Park and North Melbourne demolished Richmond at the MCG. But then round two underwent one of the great turnarounds in league history. Hot favourites and reigning day and night premiers Hawthorne had no answer to the Stephen Silvani-inspired Carlton. Silvani capped a great comeback after injury to kick eight goals. The Blues by 26 points. Alan Jakovic kicked seven goals and was the man who sparked Melbourne's upset win over Geelong. Goal of the day went to Andrew Lamperell. This was his first kick in the big time. The shocks continued on Sunday. Sydney survived a torrid fight back from the West Coast Eagles to win by three points. Footscray quelled the goal-kicking genius of Tony Lockett and produced a hero of their own in skipper Doug Hawkins to win by 32 points. And the lowly Lions thrashed Essendon. Successive losses for the Bombers, but for Fitzroy, a win worth savouring. Round two. Richmond versus North Melbourne. Richmond, C. Lambert, one vote. North Melbourne, K. Anning, two votes. North Melbourne, P. Spargo, three votes. Melbourne versus Geelong. Melbourne, A. Jakovic, one vote. Geelong, T. Poole, two votes. Melbourne, M. Pickering, three votes. Carlton versus Hawthorne. Carlton, F. Brown, one vote. Carlton, M. Hanna, two votes. Carlton, S. Silvani, three votes. Collingwood versus Brisbane. Collingwood, T. Lehman, one vote. Collingwood, G. Pert, two votes. Collingwood, G. Wright, three votes. Essendon versus Fitzroy. Fitzroy, R. Osborne, one vote. Fitzroy, B. McCormack, two votes. Fitzroy, M. Dundas, three votes. Footscray versus St Kilda. Footscray, D. Hawkins, one vote. Footscray, N. Callot, two votes. Footscray, S. Wind, three votes. Sydney versus West Coast. West Coast, P. Matera, one vote. Swans, L. Higgins, two votes. Sydney, B. Tunbridge, three votes. Hawthorne rebounded from a shock loss to Carlton with a 26-point win over North at the MCG. The return of Brereton and the brilliance of Platten helped the Hawks dominate the game, especially in the third quarter when they piled on eight goals. Melbourne had a home game at Princess Park. I wish they were anywhere else as Adelaide snatched an 11-point win. Peter Dacos kicked four goals against Sydney, including this stunner. And Collingwood at home were victorious by 19 points. Geelong's fourth biggest win in history, a massive 126 points, highlighted the frailties in the young Richmond side. Scott kicked seven goals in a best of field performance, while Darcy kicked six. At the Western Oval, Essendon responded to their critics by defeating Footscray. The margin, 22 points, with Long a great performer. The West Coast unveiled a secret weapon named Metropolis at Subiaco on the Sunday. He thanked them for their confidence with six goals on debut, and that was enough to stop St Kilda. Round three. North Melbourne versus Hawthorne. North Melbourne, P. German, one vote. Hawthorne, A. Gowers, two votes. Hawthorne, J. Platten, three votes. 
Melbourne versus Adelaide. Melbourne, J Steins, one vote. Adelaide, W Wiedemann, two votes. Adelaide, D Marshall, three votes. Collingwood versus Sydney. Collingwood, G Pert, one vote. Sydney, B Doolan, two votes. Collingwood, S Russell, three votes. Geelong versus Richmond. Geelong, K Hinckley, one vote. Geelong, D Forsman, two votes. Geelong, T Poole, three votes. Footscray versus Essendon. Essendon, G O'Donnell, one vote. Essendon, D Buick, two votes. Essendon, M Long, three votes. Brisbane versus Fitzroy. Brisbane, D Bain, one vote. Brisbane, M McLean, two votes. Brisbane, D White, three votes. West Coast versus St Kilda. West Coast, C Lewis, one vote. West Coast, P Pios, two votes. West Coast, C Turley, three votes. So the situation after the uh, first three rounds, White of Brisbane with six votes leading the Brownlow medal with Paul on five and Hawkins on four. Early days yet, a break back to the Southern Cross after this. Welcome back to the 1992 Brownlow Middle. Round four, a glamour round. Three big matches. West Coast up against Geelong at Subiaco. Essendon against Collingwood. St Kilda against Hawthorne. Stuart Lowe played particularly well for St Kilda in rounds four, five and six. Let's see if Big Stewie can make a move in this section of the vote. 43,000 fans put pressure on the gatekeepers at the MCG. That was nothing like the pressure Carlton would apply to North in a frenetic final quarter to open round four. The Blues, with Diulio kicking five goals, won their third straight. Also undefeated on top was Collingwood. The Magpies won their replay of the 1990 Grand Final against Essendon, surviving a six-goal fight back from the Bombers and counting the cost with seven injured players. Richmond gave Alan Jeans his first win with his new club, upsetting the disappointing Demons. And Fitzroy was entrenched in fourth spot after accounting for Adelaide. It was the best start to a season for five years by the troubled Maroons. But Moravan, Lockett and Lowe gave St Kilda a dream eight-goal start against the reigning Premiers. But Hawthorne provided the nightmare as they rolled home. St Kilda by ten points, thanks to Lockett's sixth within minutes remaining. Footscray made it three from four, Delray kicking seven against Sydney. In Perth, Gary Ablett, the retiring champ from Geelong, played his 150th. He gathered 36 possessions, took the best two marks of the day, kicked five goals, including a couple off the ground, and helped the Cats to their first win in Perth. An 11-goal second quarter, incidentally, helped sink the Eagles. Round four. <clears throat> North Melbourne versus Carlton. Carlton, C. Bradley, one vote. North Melbourne, B. Allison, two votes. Carlton... A. Gleeson, three votes. Essendon versus Collingwood. Essendon, D. Buick, one vote. Collingwood, P. Williams, two votes. Essendon, D. Kickett, three votes. Richmond versus Melbourne. Richmond, M. Knights, one vote. Richmond, Tony Free, two votes. Richmond, C. Lambert, three votes. Fitzroy versus Adelaide. Adelaide, S. Wren, one vote. Fitzroy, P. Broderick, two votes. Fitzroy, B. McCormick, three votes. St Kilda versus Hawthorne. St Kilda, S. Lowe, one vote. Hawthorne, S. Lawrence, two votes. St Kilda, D. Grant, three votes. Sydney versus Footscray. Footscray, 
S. Wallace, one vote. Footscray, D. Del Rey, two votes. Footscray, C. Grant, three votes. West Coast versus Geelong. Geelong, A. Buse, one vote. Geelong, T. McGrath, two votes. Geelong, G. Ablett, three votes. In a season of continuing upsets, Essendon dropped its longest serving player, Simon Madden, for the first time in a decade. And then stunned reigning Premier's Hawthorne at Waverley Park. Star for the Bombers was Madden's heir apparent, Paul Salmon. Footscray consolidated second place with four wins from five games, thanks to a 39-point win over North. At Princess Park, Carlton's unbeaten run came to an end at the unlikely hands of Sydney. But that merely set the scene for the shock of the round. Under lights at Carrara, a youngster named Ray Windsor, playing his first senior game for the year, drew the match between last year's grand finalists, the West Coast Eagles, and the reigning wooden spooners from Brisbane. For the Bears and young Windsor, it was a kick to savour. Nearly 40,000 saw Adelaide predictably whitewash Richmond on the middle day of the Easter Triple Treat. But the next day, Collingwood had to struggle for much of the match before finally overwhelming Melbourne. Again, the magic of Dacos provided the transformation. St Kilda overcame miserable kicking for goal to stop Fitzroy. And the hero was Stewie Lowe. His marking power, just the difference. Round five. Hawthorne versus Essendon. Essendon, M Long, one vote. Essendon, P Salmon, two votes. Essendon, D Buick, three votes. North Melbourne versus Footscray. Footscray, N Kellett, one vote. Footscray, S. Atkins, two votes. Footscray, S. Wind, three votes. Carlton versus Sydney. Carlton, S. Kernahan, one vote. Sydney, D. Lewis, two votes. Carlton, E. Spaulding, three votes. Brisbane versus West Coast. West Coast, D. Kemp, one vote. Brisbane, D. Bain, two votes. Brisbane, M. Ashcroft, three votes. Adelaide versus Richmond. Adelaide, S. Tregenza, one vote. Richmond, S. Maxfield, two votes. Adelaide, C. McDermott, three votes. Collingwood versus Melbourne. Melbourne, T. Viney, one vote. Collingwood, P. Dacos, two votes. Collingwood, S. Russell, three votes. Fitzroy versus St Kilda. St Kilda, N. Burke, one vote. Fitzroy, J. Blakey, two votes. St Kilda, S. Lowe, three votes. Collingwood's winning streak came to a halt in round six before 72,000 at Waverley Park. The Magpies' first loss of the season was inflicted by a Hawthorne side, spearheaded by Jason Dunstall, who kicked nine goals. Carlton were blitzed by the Saints' Lockett, who kicked six before half-time. But in the second half, they kept him kickless and snatched an eight-point victory. Essendon trailed by 47 points against Melbourne in the last quarter and got up by a point. Salmon the magician with seven goals. Hodges kicked eight in Adelaide's 10-goal win over Brisbane. Gary Ablett was again outstanding as Geelong made it three from five with a 98-point win over Fitzroy. And in a cruel twist, the West Coast came from behind to beat Richmond. For the second time in two days at the MCG, last quarter revivals resulted in one-point thrillers. Round six. Sydney versus North Melbourne. Sydney, D. Lewis, one vote. North Melbourne, S. Smith, two votes. North Melbourne, W. Carey, three votes. Collingwood versus Hawthorne. Hawthorne, J. Platten, one vote. Hawthorne, B. Allen, two votes. Hawthorne, J. Dunstall, three votes. Essendon versus Melbourne. Melbourne, P. Bryce, one vote. Essendon, P. Salmon, two votes. Essendon, M. Long, three votes. 
Carlton versus St Kilda. St Kilda, R. Harvey, one vote. Carlton, J. Doritich, two votes. St Kilda, N. Burke, three votes. Richmond versus West Coast. West Coast, J. Worsfold, one vote. West Coast, C. Main Waring, two votes. Richmond, C. Nash, three votes. Geelong versus Fitzroy. Geelong, M. Bairstow, one vote. Geelong, D. Forsman, two votes. Geelong, K. Hinckley, three votes. Adelaide versus Brisbane. Adelaide, S. Wren, one vote. Brisbane, D. Bain, two votes. Adelaide, A. Jarman, three votes. So we're a quarter of the way through and Stuart Lowe and Michael Long, the joint leaders at this stage. And when we think about Stuart Lowe, we think about marking and marking's always a highlight of any football season. The screamer, the diving mark and even the one-hander. A quarter of the way through the 1992 Brownlow medal as I welcome you back to the Australis Room of the Southern Cross in Melbourne for the count. Well, Geelong was on fire in round seven, eight, and nine. They kicked 37 goals, a record against Brisbane. They kicked 32 goals in round eight and 28 goals in round nine. Players to watch out for over these three rounds Ablett, Hinckley, Lowe again did very well in round seven and eight. Ruse and Scott Wine in round number seven. Well, what about round seven? An amazing round. Gary Ablett kicked nine goals, Tony Lockett kicked ten, and Jason Dunstall kicked 17 goals, just one short of the record that Fred Fanning kicked way back in 1947. On a weekend when scoring records were shattered, Jason Dunstall came within a goal of the biggest. His 17 goals against Richmond from 25 kicks and 18 marks took him within one of Fred Fanning's 45-year-old mark. Melbourne followed up a one-point loss to Essendon with a draw against Sydney. 
Jim West doing the damage for the Swans in the last seconds. Lockett continued his amazing run against Adelaide, 10 in a 74-point win, taking him to 32 goals in his three matches against the Crows. Footscray retained top spot on the ladder with a storming win over Carlton at the MCG on Sunday. Atkins again outstanding for the Dogs. The West Coast Eagles weren't travelling well. At North Hobart Oval, they suffered at the hands of the resurgent Lions, going down to the ruse-inspired Fitzroy by 20 points. All else failed, however, at Carrara, where Geelong kicked the highest score in league history. A 14-goal last quarter took them to 37-17-239, eclipsing Fitzroy's old mark by a point. Gary Ablett kicked a modest nine goals. Round seven. Hawthorne versus Richmond. Hawthorne, P. Cooper, one vote. Hawthorne, B. Allen, two votes. Hawthorne, J. Dunstall, three votes. Melbourne versus Sydney. Sydney, A. McGovern, one vote. Melbourne, G. Yates, two votes. Sydney, D. Carroll, three votes. St Kilda versus Adelaide. St Kilda, S. Newport, one vote. St Kilda, T. Lockett, two votes. St Kilda, T. Allen, three votes. Collingwood versus North Melbourne. Collingwood, G. Brown, one vote. Collingwood, T. Francis, two votes. Collingwood, S. Russell, three votes. Footscray versus Carlton. Footscray, N. Callett, one vote. Footscray, S. Wind, two votes. Footscray, S. Collinyuk, three votes. Fitzroy versus West Coast. Fitzroy, B. Stevens, one vote. Fitzroy, M. Dundas, two votes. Fitzroy, P. Ruse, three votes. Brisbane versus Geelong. Geelong, S. Handley, one vote. Geelong, M. Bearstow, two votes. Geelong, G. Ablett, three votes. It was a spectacular start to round eight, a match billed as the clash of the century. But for football centurion Collingwood, it was one to forget. Carlton with Kernahan Supreme produced the big results on the big night. In a warm-up for their State of Origin showdown, Sydney thrashed Brisbane. Ruckman Brad Tunbridge outstanding. For the second week in a row, Geelong topped 30 goals. Inspired by Ablett and Brownless up forward, the Cats grabbed top spot on the ladder. Longmire kicked seven in North's win over Essendon. Osborne was on target with eight as Fitzroy accounted for Richmond, while Tony Lockett was subdued as St Kilda won by ten goals against Melbourne. Footscray's rule at the helm of the AFL table was ended in Perth when the West Coast Eagles showed traces of their 1991 form with a 59-point win. Fred Hetty returned with seven goals. Round eight. Collingwood versus Carlton. Carlton, S. Kernahan, one vote. Carlton, M. Hogg, two votes. Carlton, A. Gleeson, three votes. Sydney versus Brisbane. Sydney, L. Higgins, one vote. Sydney, B. Tunbridge, two votes. Sydney, J. Lawson, three votes. St Kilda versus Melbourne. St Kilda, R. Morris, one vote. St Kilda, R. Harvey, two votes. St Kilda, B. Bowie, three votes. Richmond versus Fitzroy. Fitzroy, M. Dundas, one vote. Fitzroy, J. Cormack, two votes. Fitzroy, R. Osborne, three votes. North Melbourne versus Essendon. North Melbourne, A. Stevens, one vote. North Melbourne, J. Ramiro, two votes. North Melbourne, A. Ishinko, three votes. Geelong versus Adelaide. Geelong, B. Brownless, one vote. Geelong, K. Hinckley, two votes. Geelong, M. Bearstow, three votes. West Coast versus Footscray. 
West Coast, B. Heady, one vote. West Coast, A. McIntosh, two votes. West Coast, P. Matera, three votes. In round nine, Fitzroy moved into the top six with its third win in a row, this time under lights against North at the MCG. The West Coast's dismal record away from Perth was improved with a 24-point win over Carlton. The Blues' Silvani scored eight of his side's meagre 11-goal tally. The records continued to tumble for Geelong. Their total of 181 points was the club's best against Essendon. The supercharged Cats stayed on top of the league ladder. Melbourne were becoming the easy beats. They succumbed to Hawthorne by 12 goals. The Young Tigers upset Sydney for win number two. Footscray slogged it out in the wet for a very hard-fought victory over Brisbane. Goal of Adelaide, it seemed, turned out for the big one against Collingwood. The Magpies were making their AFL debut at Football Park and celebrated with a heart-stopping five-point win. Gavin Brown outstanding for the visitors. Round nine. North Melbourne versus Fitzroy. Fitzroy, J. Blakey, one vote. Fitzroy, D. Wielden, two votes. Fitzroy, R. Lyon, three votes. Hawthorne versus Melbourne. Hawthorne, S. Lawrence, one vote. Hawthorne, G. Ayres, two votes. Hawthorne, D. Anderson, three votes. Essendon versus Geelong. Geelong, K. Hinckley, one vote. Essendon, D. Kickett, two votes. Geelong, R. Scott, three votes. Carlton versus West Coast. Carlton, F. Brown, one vote. Carlton, S. Silvani, two votes. West Coast, D. Lamb, three votes. Richmond versus Sydney. Richmond, C. Smith, one vote. Richmond, T. Free, two votes. Sydney, B. Tunbridge, three votes. Brisbane versus Footscray. Footscray, S. Wind, one vote. Footscray, P. Foster, two votes. Footscray, T. Liberatore, three votes. Adelaide versus Collingwood. Adelaide, N. Smart, one vote. Collingwood, G. Brown, two votes. Collingwood, G. Wright, three votes. So the situation after nine rounds is that Scotty Russell is surrounded by two of the favourites, Jason Dunsell and Scott Wine. Mick McGuan without a vote. Don't panic, Collingwood fans. He comes home with a rush at the end of the season. And Jason Dunsell. Well, he's got very big matches coming up in rounds 14, 16, 20 and 22 and he's going pretty well. I'm sure all of us at some stage have wished that uh, you too could be better than the real thing.
Welcome back to the Southern Cross. The 1992 Brownlow Medal joint leaders at the moment, three of them, including Scotty Wine. Watch for Scotty in the next segment of votes. And also Mick McGowan, who I mentioned hasn't got a vote so far. Played very well in rounds 10, 11 and 12. And Chris McDermott might also come to the fore. The big match in round 10 was Geelong up against Collingwood. The man who kicked the most goals in round 10 was Tony Lockett. He got a dozen against Brisbane. The firepower of Peter Wilson sparked the West Coast to their third win on end, this time at home in the rain against Adelaide. The next day Geelong's goal scoring spree came to an end when the Dacos inspired Collingwood overcame a slow start at Waverley Park. The mercurial magpie kicked the goal of the day before going down with a shoulder injury. Melbourne hadn't won since a shock victory over the Cats in March. They returned to the winners list with a six goal win over North. Newcomer Sean Charles kicking five. David Rhys-Jones came back. He kicked five in Carlton's win over Essendon. Lockett kicked 12 in an annihilation of the Brisbane Bears at Moorabbin. And big men Scott Wynde and Glenn Coleman combined in Footscray's ladder-topping victory over Richmond. Vintage play by Darren Jarman set up one of Dunstall's seven goals, but the Hawks weren't extended in Sydney. Round 10. West Coast versus Adelaide. Adelaide, S. Wren, one vote. West Coast, D. Laidley, two votes. West Coast, T. Eugle, three votes. Geelong versus Collingwood. Collingwood, G. Brown, one vote. Geelong, T. McGrath, two votes. Collingwood, G. Wright, three votes. Melbourne versus North Melbourne. Melbourne, R. Keogh, one vote. Melbourne, M. Pickering, two votes. Melbourne, G. Lovett, three votes. Carlton versus Essendon. Carlton, F. Brown, one vote. Carlton, B. Scholl, two votes. Carlton, C. Bradley, three votes. St Kilda versus Brisbane. St Kilda, R. Morris, one vote. St Kilda, T. Lockett, two votes. St Kilda, S. Lowe, three votes. Footscray versus Richmond. Richmond, S. Griffiths, one vote. Footscray, P. Foster, two votes. Footscray, S. Wind, three votes. Sydney versus Hawthorne. Sydney, S. Minton Connell, one vote. Hawthorne, D. Jarman, two votes. Hawthorne, T. Hall, three votes. Melbourne's last quarter fade-outs continued in round 11 when the Demons succumbed meekly to Carlton. They failed to score in the last term. Brisbane's horror run continued, a 10-goal thrashing this time at the hands of the Young Tigers. Paul Roos led Fitzroy to one of their great victories in recent years and did it from the front, kicking the winning goal in the last minute to give the Lions a three-point win over Collingwood. At Cadinia Park, there was another heart-stopper and another three-point result. The Lockett-less Saints were overtaken by Geelong, with Paul Brown kicking the sealer for the Cats. After three straight losses, Essendon returned to the winner's list with a 43-point win over Sydney at the MCG. Adelaide inflicted North Melbourne's seventh loss from ten games, and Footscray jumped clear on top of the ladder for the great win over reigning Premier's Hawthorne. Del Rey kicked five in the Bulldogs' 34-point triumph. Round 11. Melbourne versus Carlton. Carlton, F. Brown, one vote. Carlton, M. Hanna, two votes. Carlton, E. Spaulding, three votes. Richmond versus Brisbane. Richmond, M. Knights, one vote. Richmond, S. Jackson, two votes. Richmond, S. Maxfield, three votes. Fitzroy versus Collingwood. Fitzroy, M. Seacamp, one vote. Fitzroy, M. Gale, two votes. Collingwood, T. Francis, three votes. Geelong versus St Kilda. Geelong, B. Stoneham, one vote. St Kilda, N. Winmar, two votes. St Kilda, S. Lowe, three votes. 
Essendon versus Sydney. Essendon, G. O'Donnell, one vote. Essendon, M. Harvey, two votes. Essendon, P. Hills, three votes. Footscray versus Hawthorne. Footscray, S. McPherson, one vote. Footscray, N. Callett, two votes. Footscray, D. Hawkins, three votes. Adelaide versus North Melbourne. North Melbourne, C. Scholl, one vote. North Melbourne, M. Martin, two votes. Adelaide, S. Wren, three votes. The long weekend for the Queen's birthday wasn't short on drama. The West Coast had their first win over North at the MCG. One-time merger mates Footscray and Fitzroy were playing with newfound pride. The Bulldogs kicked 11 in the third quarter, and with Atkins running right, held on to top spot on the ladder. Essendon accounted for Richmond with Somerville kicking five. Bottom side Brisbane continued Melbourne's horrid run of outs at Carrara. Gary Ablett thrilled the 60,000 crowd at the MCG for the first half that produced five goals. It was enough to sink the Blues. On the Monday, two thrillers. Adelaide upset Hawthorne by a point with Hart steering through the clincher. The Crows had won their first game at Waverley Park. But at the MCG, more than 80,000 saw another nail-biter. Kevin Port was publicly slated by coach Ken Sheldon, but he bounced back to snap the winning goal and Gibson Kilda a one-point win over Collingwood. Round 12. North Melbourne versus West Coast. North Melbourne, A. Yashenko, one vote. West Coast, D. Lamb, two votes. West Coast, D. Kemp, three votes. Essendon versus Richmond. Essendon, P. Hills, one vote. Essendon, D. Kickett, two votes. Essendon, G. Wanganeen, three votes. Carlton versus Geelong. Geelong, P. Riccardi, one vote. Geelong, D. Burke, two votes. Geelong, G. Ablett, three votes. Brisbane versus Melbourne. Brisbane, S. McIver, one vote. Brisbane, J. Gastev, two votes. Brisbane, M. Leslie, three votes. Hawthorne versus Adelaide. Hawthorne, J. Platten, one vote. Hawthorne, A. Collins, two votes. Hawthorne, D. Jarman, three votes. Collingwood versus St Kilda. Collingwood, C. Kelly, one vote. St Kilda, D. Gregg, two votes. St Kilda, N. Burke, three votes. Fitzroy versus Footscray. Fitzroy, P. Ruse, one vote. Footscray, S. Wind, two votes. Footscray, S. Atkins, three votes. So we're halfway in the 1992 Brownlow medal and the favourite is leading at halfway. Remember that uh, Liver won with 18 votes from Footscray a couple of years ago. Well, Scotty Wine's got 14 right now and a Stewie Lowe on 13. We check the leaders' board and the team's board after this break. Way through the 1992 Brownlow medal count, a few surprises, but the favourites at the top of the ladder at the moment with Scott Wine and Stuart Lowe. Let's check the teams and see how your favourite players are going. Wren doing very well from Adelaide, McDermott with three, Wren leading there from six. From Brisbane, White was showing up early with six, he's ineligible. Bain has been a very good polar in the past, a Sandover medalist with five. To Carlton, and uh, Gleeson ineligible, Brown and Spalding the leaders there. No Kernahan, Hannah and Bradley both on four. Mickey Maguire, I promise I won't mention you for the rest of the night. You're not on the board at the moment, mate. Russell and Wright both leading there with nine. Gavin Brown had a lot of injuries in the second half of the season. To Essendon, 
and Kickett, who played brilliantly in the middle part of the season, leading there. To Fitzroy. And Paul Roos, surprisingly, on four. Behind Matthew Dundas and McCormack, Osborne also on four. To Footscray, where a lot of the action's occurring. And Scott Wine on 14. And Doug Hawkins on seven. Kellett on six. To Geelong, a lot of players have voted strongly here. Gary Ablett amongst them with Mark Bairstow, Ken Hinckley there. Three of their favourites, 9-7-7. Seven, seven. Probably not doing themselves much good. Hawthorne. Jason Dunstall, I reckon he's got maximum votes so far. Three out of three, with four big matches to come. To Melbourne, Jim Steins won it last year. On one at the moment, Michael Pickering with five, but he was injured in the second half of the season. To North Melbourne, and the leaders here, Ashenko with four. Watch for Carey late in the year. He isn't eligible, but he will vote very well. To Richmond, Maxwell with five, Lambert four. Surprisingly, no votes for Campbell. St Kilda, big move here, of course, Stuart Lowe. His best football was in the first 14 rounds, though. Burke was seven, and Lockett's going to get votes. In Sydney, none of the favourites in the Sydney team. Tunbridge had a terrific start to the year. And West Coast, where they had a very even season, they're in the grand final. But at the moment, uh, from West Coast, Lamb leading on five. We look at the leaders' board, and the situation here is that Scott Wine with 14 is leading on 13 Stuart Lowe so Wind and Lowe the two leaders and Dunstall not too far behind them let's go to round 13 and a big round for Tony Lockett he kicked a personal best performance here 15 goals for the Saints up against Sydney after successive losses Hawthorne bounced back against Fitzroy gave skipper Gary Ayres something to celebrate in his 250th game the high scoring Cats did it again kicking 29 goals against the hapless North Melbourne at the MCG. Carlton made it 8 from 12 with a hard-fought 23-point win over Adelaide. And then at Moorabbin, it was another one of those Tony Lockett extravaganzas. The Saints' big band posted 15 goals, 4 from 20 kicks. And in between dabbled in a bit of old-time wrestling. Sydney weren't in the show. Footscray stayed a game clear on top by thrashing Melbourne. The margin a whopping 107 points and Essendon made hard work of bottom side Brisbane at Carrara. The match of the round saw Collingwood recover from a hopeless position in the dying minutes to win by a point over the Eagles in Perth. After successive losses by a kick, the Magpies watched young Troy Lehman kick them home by the narrowest possible margin. Round 13, Hawthorne versus Fitzroy. Fitzroy, D. Wielden, one vote. Hawthorne, J. Dunstall, two votes. Hawthorne, D. Jarman, three votes. North Melbourne versus Geelong. Geelong, K. Hinckley, one vote. Geelong, T. McGrath, two votes. Geelong, D. Burke, three votes. Carlton versus Adelaide. Adelaide, D. Marshall, one vote. Adelaide, A. Jarman, two votes. Carlton, J. Doritich, three votes. St Kilda versus Sydney. St Kilda, N. Winmar, one vote. St Kilda, A. Fletcher, two votes. St Kilda, T. Lockett, three votes. Footscray versus Melbourne. Footscray, C. Grant, one vote. Footscray, S. Wallace, two votes. Footscray, B. Stanfield, three votes. Brisbane versus Essendon. Brisbane, D. Bain, one vote. Essendon, D. Kickett, two votes. Essendon, P. Somerville, three votes. West Coast versus Collingwood. West Coast, P. Matera, one vote. Collingwood, M. McGuan, two votes. <laughs> Collingwood, D. Monkhorst, three votes. For the first time this season, North Melbourne won under lights, and they could thank John Longmire, who kicked seven. Darren Jarman saw to the heights as Hawthorne and West Coast staged a grand final rematch at Waverley Park. At this day, the tables would be turned. The Eagles took the honours. Lockett kicked seven in the first half against Richmond. And after he retired hurt, fellow forward Stewie Lowe kept up the momentum with eight. Co-tenants Fitzroy and Carlton did battle at Princes Park. 
Lions this day with a last quarter charge. Geelong thrashed Sydney, but at a cost, losing big men Burke and Stoneham with injuries. Collingwood complained long and loud as their match against ladder leaders Footscray was transferred to the MCG. It mattered little. For the fourth time in as many rounds, it was a nail-biter for Magpie fans. They survived by a goal. A 10-goal final quarter burst gave Essendon an upset in Adelaide. Salmon the hero with nine. Round 14. North Melbourne versus Brisbane. North Melbourne, D. McRae, one vote. North Melbourne, A. Ishenko, two votes. North Melbourne, C. C. Scholl, three votes. Hawthorne versus West Coast. Hawthorne, A. Condon, one vote. Hawthorne, J. Platten, two votes. West Coast, C. Mainwaring, three votes. Richmond versus St Kilda. St Kilda, R. Harvey, one vote. St Kilda, T. Allen, two votes. St Kilda, S. Lowe, three votes. Fitzroy versus Carlton. Carlton, G. Williams, one vote. Fitzroy, M. Armstrong, two votes. Fitzroy, P. Abbott, three votes. Collingwood versus Footscray. Footscray, G. Eppleston, one vote. Collingwood, M. McGuan, two votes. Footscray, T. Liberatore, three votes. Sydney versus Geelong. Geelong, S. Handley, one vote. Geelong, A. Wills, two votes. Geelong, M. Mansfield, three votes. Adelaide versus Essendon. Essendon, G. Wanganeen, one vote. Essendon, D. Buick, two votes. Essendon, P. Salmon, three votes. Adelaide started round 15 in flying style, thrashing the Sydney Swans by 67 points. Carlton's finals aspirations took a dive when the Blues fell to Richmond by three points. Fitzroy too stumbled at the hands of a rejuvenated Melbourne led from the front by skipper Gary Lyon. The full forwards again starred, Peter Sumich kicked 11-8 in the Eagles' demolition of Essendon. And Tony Lockett kicked nine and took a swag of memorable marks as the Saints snuck home against North. The top two teams met at Cadinia Park, and two late goals from skipper Bairstow enabled Geelong to clear away from Footscray on the ladder. Not that Paul Couch would remember much about it. And at Carrara, the steal of the round. Hawthorne's Tony Hall took the big grab and kicked the clincher with less than a minute to play. Round 15. Adelaide versus Sydney. Sydney, S. Mitten Cole, one vote. Adelaide, A. Jarman, two votes. Adelaide, M. Bickley, three votes. <coughs> Richmond versus Carlton. Carlton, J. Madden, one vote. Carlton, F. Brown, two votes. Richmond, W. Campbell, three votes. Essendon versus West Coast. West Coast, P. Matera, one vote. West Coast, D. Lamb, two votes. West Coast, P. Sumich, three votes. St Kilda versus North Melbourne. North Melbourne, D. Crocker, one vote. St Kilda, A. Fletcher, two votes. St Kilda, T. Lockett, three votes. Melbourne versus Fitzroy. Melbourne, C. Sullivan, one vote. Melbourne, J. Steins, two votes. Fitzroy, P. Ruse, three votes. Geelong versus Footscray. Geelong, S. Hocking, one vote. Geelong, K. Hinckley, two votes. Geelong, M. Bairstow, three votes. Brisbane versus Hawthorne. 
Hawthorne, A. Gowers, one vote. Brisbane, T. Clark, two votes. Brisbane, M. Leslie, three votes. 15 rounds down, nine to go. Stuart Lowe leading by two votes from Scott Wine. With nine rounds to go, as I said, Stuart Lowe was injured in two of the matches to come and misses one match with a bye. And a Scotty win, a Scotty Wine, I should say, plays in each of the matches with one bye. So Stuart Lowe has six out of nine chances. Scotty Wine has eight out of nine. The tension building at the Southern Cross. Nine rounds remaining in the 1992 Brownlow medal. How's your fancy going? Stuart Lowe leading at the moment from Scott Wine. Speaking of Scott Wine, he has a terrific round in round 16 up against Adelaide at Waverley. And Jason Dunstall, it was his round. He kicks nine against Geelong and brings up the ton. The start of round 16 saw another bruising encounter between the Eagles and Melbourne in Perth. Simmich kicked five, and the home team withstood the spirited challenge to win by 22 points. At Geelong, many thought the Cats would maul the out-of-sorts Hawks, who were desperately trying to stay in touch with the Six. With Paul Deere and Ruckman Stephen Lawrence back, the Hawks continued their recent dominance over the Cats. The match highlighted by Jason Dunstall's nine goals, which enabled him to break the century for the third time in his illustrious career. Another player amongst the goals was Collingwood's Peter Dacos, who booted seven against the Tigers, despite missing a month with a shoulder injury. And at the MCG, Essendon vs St Kilda's bubble. Tony Lockett failed to kick a goal for the first time in four years. Round 16. West Coast vs Melbourne. Melbourne, D. Swartz, one vote. West Coast, G. Jakovic, two votes. West Coast, C. Mainwaring, three votes. Footscray vs Adelaide. Footscray... K. Reynolds, one vote. Footscray, S. Wind, two votes. Footscray, B. Royal, three votes. Essendon versus St Kilda. Essendon, D. Wallace, one vote. Essendon, D. Kickett, two votes. St Kilda, R. Harvey, three votes. Carlton versus Brisbane. Carlton, G. Williams, one vote. Carlton, S. Kernahan, two votes. Carlton, J. Doritich, three votes. Collingwood versus Richmond. Collingwood, T. Francis, one vote. Collingwood, M. McGuan, two votes. Collingwood, G. Brown, three votes. Geelong versus Hawthorne. Hawthorne, B. Allen, one vote. Hawthorne, J. Dunstall, two votes. Hawthorne, D. Pritchard, three votes. Sydney versus Fitzroy. Fitzroy, P. Broderick, one vote. Fitzroy, J. Wind, two votes. Fitzroy, J. Cormick, three votes. In round 17, Footscray, which had to make six compulsory changes, played inspired football to beat St Kilda at Moorabbin, the first team in 12 months to achieve the feat. Another fine effort was produced by the Blues. For the second time in the season, they beat Hawthorne, despite the reappearance of Dermot Brereton, who'd missed 12 weeks after hip surgery. In the match of the round, North Melbourne won a nail-biter against Richmond. In the dying seconds of the match, this free kick against Roos fullback Mick Martin could have spelt disaster. The North defender was none too pleased. But instead, a fickle wind at Princess Park had the final say. The Roos won by a point. Mick Martin breathed a sigh of relief. And in another cliffhanger, Essendon continued its climb up the ladder with a thrilling three-point win over early season frontrunners Fitzroy at the North Hobart ground. Round 17, Hawthorne versus Carlton. Carlton, J. Doritich, one vote. Hawthorne, D. Pritchard, two votes. Carlton, A. Gleeson, three votes. Geelong versus Melbourne. Geelong, J. Barnes, one vote. 
Melbourne, Jay Steins, two votes. Geelong, Kay Hinckley, three votes. North Melbourne versus Richmond. Richmond, C. Nash, one vote. North Melbourne, C. Shoal, two votes. North Melbourne, D. Steele, three votes. St Kilda versus Footscray. St Kilda, R. Harvey, one vote. Footscray, S. Atkins, two votes. Footscray, T. Liberatore, three votes. Brisbane versus Collingwood. Collingwood, M. McGuan, one vote. Brisbane, R. Champion, two votes. Collingwood, D. Monkhurst, three votes. Fitzroy versus Essendon. Fitzroy, B. Stevens, one vote. Essendon, P. Somerville, two votes. Fitzroy, M. Dundas, three votes. West Coast versus Sydney. Sydney, J. Lawson, one vote. West Coast, G. Jakovic, two votes. West Coast, P. Matera, three votes. Round 18, and Collingwood became the first team in 1992 to win a quadrilla of interstate matches. And they ground out an 18-point win over the Swans at the SCG. Hawthorne's dominance of North Melbourne continued. The brown and gold machine, inspired by the dynamic Darren Jarman, beat the Roos for the 13th successive time, dating back to 1984. At the MCG, Essendon continued its search towards a finals berth by winning its seventh match from eight encounters, and downing Footscray for the second time in 92. The biggest shock of the round occurred at Princess Park, when the Bears, thanks to eight goals from Rod Owen, won their first match in Melbourne for three years by upsetting Fitzroy. St Kilda, desperate to consolidate in the six, after losses to Essendon and Footscray, produced a big win over the Eagles in the wet at Waverley Park. West Coast's 66-point loss was its worst performance for three years. And a ferocious Melbourne caused more frustration for Adelaide by becoming the fourth Victorian-based team to beat the Crows at Football Park. Round 18. Sydney versus Collingwood. Collingwood, D. Monkhurst, one vote. Sydney, D. Lewis, two votes. Collingwood, C. Stasovic, three votes. Hawthorne versus North Melbourne. Hawthorne, A. Collins, one vote. North Melbourne, W. Carey, two votes. Hawthorne, D. Jarman, three votes. Essendon versus Footscray. Footscray, S. Wind, one vote. Essendon, D. Buick, two votes. Essendon, G. Wanganine, three votes. Fitzroy versus Brisbane. Brisbane, M. Kennedy, one vote. Brisbane, R. Owen, two votes. Brisbane, T. Clark, three votes. St Kilda versus West Coast. St Kilda, R. Harvey, one vote. St Kilda, R. Morris, two votes. St Kilda, N. Winmar, three votes. Richmond versus Geelong. Geelong, M. Bairstow, one vote. Geelong, K. Hinckley, two votes. Geelong, P. Couch, three votes. Adelaide versus Melbourne. Melbourne, G. Lovett, one vote. Melbourne, a. Lovell, two votes. Melbourne, J. Steins, three votes. Three quarters of the way through the 1992 Brownlow medal and Scott Wine leads by one vote from Stuart Lowe and one vote to uh, Ken Hinckley in third placing. One of the highlights during the year is Plays of the Month. Editor Warren Smith and my mate and colleague Sandy Roberts have put together this Plays of the Year. Geelong. B. Brownless, one vote. Collingwood, T. Francis, two votes. Hawthorne, J. Platten, three votes.
Thank you, Ross. We'll take a break from the medal count and welcome our inductees into the infamous All-Australian Plays of season 1992. Yes, this year our inductees have used various modes of transport, one unforgettable by bathtub. They've arrived by air. And in the case of Nigel Smart, trodden over hot coals just to join this elite group. Did I say smart? Well, smart is perhaps the best way of describing Anthony Black's first up routine between the vertical beams. Oh, look at that beautiful balance. Oh, lovely routine. Now that shows initiative, as did Darren Flanagan when he handballed between Chris Grant's legs. While Darren Jarman showed plenty of flair when he amazingly decided to blind turn no one in particular. <laughs> Not that Jim Steins would have known anything about that because he was KO'd by Andrew the Slam Dunkley. Hawk Scott McGuinness was involved in one of the more unfortunate incidents of season 92 when he was accidentally kneed in the groin by teammate Ray Jenke and boy! That hurt. Don't worry, Scott, I'm sure they're both still there. And as Mark Harvey discovered, two balls are better than none. I know it's embarrassing, but I just read this. Whoever writes this rubbish should be made to change places with Putsgray's Dougie Hawkins. Or worse still, made to kick like Collingwood's James Manson. Oh, poor old James. Well, at least he didn't fall for the old three-card trick. No way, James is far too intelligent to be caught out like that. But James, watch out for Leon. Oh no. Give the boy a rap and look what happens. The best first-year commentator goes to this charming young lady, I'm sorry, former bomber Tim Watson. Always accurate, always concise. There's uh, a blustery wind. I think it's favouring the uh, left of screen, although I went out to, onto the ground at the end of the reserves game and it was blowing both ways. Oh, Tim. It's enough to give you the sheets of the SCG had plenty to dance about. The preview of Doug Hawkins' new career, the Phantom of the Western Oval. Now, careful, fellas, you are on national television here, so how does that old saying go? More than two shakes is a pulling down of screamers is a very special part of Aussie rules. Isn't that right, Justin? And now the ham of the year. And who else but Andrew Jarman could show off like this in front of a hostile crowd? But now the drama returns as we rejoin Anthony Black for his second routine. You'll notice the degree of difficulty has increased significantly with the use of both hands, especially during the double reverse flag twirl. And to complete his routine, he shows us the triple diagonal flag filing dismount. Superb! Once again, Anthony has displayed a very polished performance. Well, that just about wraps up our 92 All-Australian Hall of Infamy, but I'll leave you with a tribute to one of the greatest Australians of all, the humble meat pie. Nothing is more elementary than eating a 4 and 20 on a wet Brisbane day on the 17th of May. Now, just a word of warning, of course, you mustn't spill the sauce because it's hot and causes pain. While on clothes, it may well stain. So remember, if you can't keep the sauce of your windshield, you'll fail to be a great Aussie pie eater. And wouldn't it be a great crying shame to have to appear in this Hall of Fame? Thank you. No, thank you. You've been too kind. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back to the Southern Cross of Melbourne. During the commercial break, Ross Oakley gave Anthony Black, the goal umpire, three votes for his performance. He deserved them. Scott Wine leading at the moment by one vote. A bye could play a big part now with six rounds to go. Geelong with Ken Hinckley has a bye in round 20 and Footscray with Scott Wine a bye in round 21. Let's go to round 19. Round 19 and Collingwood severely damaged Essendon's finals hopes with a 22-point victory in front of more than 88,000 spectators at the MCG. St Kilda, shaping up as a grand finalist, thrashed Hawthorne by 75 points. The club's biggest win over the Hawks since 1965. To top off a great day for the Saints, Tony Lockett kicked his 100th goal for the third time in his career. The Eagles bounced back after being hammered by St Kilda to knock the stuffing out of Geelong, which had only tasted defeat once in the previous eight weeks. Melbourne continued its late-season resurgence, beating Richmond by 75 points. But the biggest winning margin of the round was Adelaide's 85-point drubbing of the Lions, whose September aspirations disappeared. Round 19. Collingwood versus Essendon. Collingwood, Jay McCartney, one vote. Essendon, 
G. Anderson, two votes. Collingwood, T. Shaw, three votes. Hawthorne versus St Kilda. Hawthorne, D. Jarman, one vote. St Kilda, L. Vidovic, two votes. St Kilda, R. Harvey, three votes. Melbourne versus Richmond. Melbourne, G. Lovett, one vote. Melbourne, B. Lovett, two votes. Melbourne, R. Keogh, three votes. Footscray versus Sydney. Sydney, B. Mitchell, one vote. Footscray, S. Wind, two votes. Sydney, P. Kelly, three votes. Geelong versus West Coast. West Coast, C. Main Waring, one vote. Geelong, K. Hinckley, two votes. West Coast, D. Kemp, three votes. Adelaide versus Fitzroy. Adelaide, B. Hart, one vote. Adelaide, C. McDermott, two votes. Adelaide, S. Wren, three votes. Carlton versus North Melbourne. North Melbourne, W. Swass, one vote. Carlton, J. Madden, two votes. Carlton, G. Williams, three votes. Round 20 saw a virtual elimination final between longtime protagonists Hawthorne and Essendon turn into a fizzer when the Hawks produced a stunning brand of football. The reigning Premier was superb, kicking eight goals per quarter to record a massive 160 point victory, the club's biggest ever win over the Bombers. Full forward Jason Dunstall returned to form by booting 12 goals eight. At Waverley Park, Footscray continued its solid form by shrugging off North Melbourne in what was widely seen as a danger game. The Bulldogs were rarely threatened and won by eight goals. At Moorabbin, St Kilda played its last match at its home ground of 27 years and beat a gritty Fitzroy by 17 points. It was a bittersweet moment for the big crowd when the final siren sounded. The upset of the round belonged to Melbourne, who shocked arch-rival Collingwood at Victoria Park. The loss cost the Pies top spot on the ladder. And up at the SCG, the Blues' finals hopes looked shot to pieces, and they trailed the Swans by 33 points during the third quarter. But they responded to snatch a thrilling nine-point win. For the Swans, it was their 11th straight loss. Round 20. West Coast versus Brisbane. West Coast... P. Harding, one vote. West Coast, A. McIntosh, two votes. West Coast, G. Jakovic, three votes. Footscray versus North Melbourne. Footscray, S. Wind, one vote. Footscray, S. Wallace, two votes. North Melbourne, W. Carey, three votes. Essendon versus Hawthorne. Hawthorne, J. Platten, one vote. Hawthorne, J. Dunstall, two votes. Hawthorne, T. Hall, three votes. St Kilda versus Fitzroy. Fitzroy, J. Wind, one vote. St Kilda, B. Bowie, two votes. St Kilda, J. Shanahan, three votes. Collingwood versus Melbourne. Collingwood, S. Morwood, one vote. Melbourne, G. Yates, two votes. Melbourne, D. Schwartz, three votes. Richmond versus Adelaide. Adelaide, S. Hodges, one vote. Adelaide, S. Lee, two votes. Adelaide, A. Jarman, three votes. Sydney versus Carlton. Carlton, J. Madden, one vote. Carlton, M. Hogg, two votes. Sydney, D. Lewis, three votes. Round 21 saw the Swans' miserable season continue. But they lost their 12th consecutive game, this time against North Melbourne under lights at the MCG. Hawthorne continued its dominance over Collingwood and in beating the Pies for the 18th time in 20 encounters kept the pressure on the Blues who were hanging on grimly to 6th position. 
Waverley Park 24 hours later, it looked as though St Kilda was going to do the Hawks a big favour by outplaying Carlton in the first half. But the Blues, inspired by the likes of Kernahan and Dorotic, produced an 11-goal third term, which not only sank the Saints, but badly damaged Hawthorne's chances of yet another finals appearance. At Subiaco, the Eagles were forced the whole way by a gallant Richmond before running out winners by 20 points. Geelong cemented its position in the top two with a workmanlike win over Fitzroy. Its first win against the Lions at Princess Park for 16 years. At the MCG, Essendon bounced back from its 26-goal hiding against Hawthorne to beat the Demons. It'd be making a habit of shaping the six. Round 21. North Melbourne versus Sydney. North Melbourne, D. Crocker, one vote. North Melbourne, B. Allison, two votes. North Melbourne, W. Carey, three votes. Hawthorne versus Collingwood. Collingwood, T. Shaw, one vote. Hawthorne, P. Hudson, two votes. Hawthorne, J. Platten, three votes. Melbourne versus Essendon. Essendon, G. Wanganeen, one vote. Essendon, G. Anderson, two votes. Essendon, P. Salmon, three votes. Fitzroy versus Geelong. Geelong, P. Couch, one vote. Fitzroy, P. Caven, two votes. Geelong, P. Riccardi, three votes. St Kilda versus Carlton. Carlton, T. Elvin, one vote. Carlton, A. Gleeson, two votes. Carlton, J. Dorotich, three votes. Brisbane versus Adelaide. Brisbane, C. Potter, one vote. Adelaide, M. Bickley, two votes. Adelaide, W. Wiedemann, three votes. West Coast versus Richmond. West Coast, C. Main Waring, one vote. Richmond, T. Bremen, two votes. West Coast, G. Jakovic, three votes. Well, just three rounds remaining. The bye is now out of the equation for both Scott Wine and Ken Hinckley. Scotty Wine leading by three, with three remaining. Back with the leaders board and the teams board after this break. Who's gonna take the bow away? Which players won the ride? The champion will walk out of here. Take Charlie home tonight. Well, it's always the most exciting time of the night here at the Brownlow Medal. As we go down to the last three rounds and we check now the team's boards to be followed by the leaders' board. Andrew Jarman from Adelaide with ten. Chris McDermott, a favourite there, with five. At Brisbane, David Bain normally votes very well here. He has six along with White and Leslie. They're the leaders at Brisbane at Carlton. Well, Hannah and Kernahan and Bradley were amongst the favourites, but Dorotich leading with 12. To Collingwood, Scott Russell and Graham Wright have been there for a while on nine. Mick McGowan and... Gavin Brown on seven, Damien Monkhorst also on seven to Essendon. Derek Kickett had a tremendous middle part of the year with 13. A Buick and Salmon, 10 apiece. From the Bombers, we go to Fitzroy, Paul Ruse with seven, obviously now out of contention this year. To Footscray, where most of the actions occurred with Scott Wine, the 22-year-old blonde ruckman, who leads with 20 from Tony Liberatore, a 1990 champion. To Geelong, Ken Hinckley, who looks the challenger now, to Scott Wine with 17. They've had some very strong polars there at Geelong. At Hawthorne, Darren Jarman and Jason Dunstall. Uh, Jason, a magnificent season with 15 and uh, Jarman 14. From Hawthorne, we go to Melbourne. Jim Steins, the winner last year, leading there with eight. To North Melbourne, They've had uh, Wayne Carey with 11, and he finished the season off in style, ineligible to win the medal. At Richmond, the leaders here are Maxfield and Lambert and Free, and Nash with four, Campbell with three. From Richmond to St Kilda, 
Well, Stuart Logue was on 16 after 14 rounds. He's still on 16. Harvey and Lockett, 12 and 10. So the three favourites show out there. It's Sydney, no contender here. Tunbridge and Lewis on eight. And a West Coast. Mayne Wearing's had a very good season. He's finished off strongly with 10, with Djakovic 10 and Matera with nine. Let's have a look at the leaders' board. Scott Wine leading with 20 votes from Ken Hinckley on 17. Stuart Lowe, 16. And Jason Dunstall on 15. And speaking of Jason Dunstall, he kicks 12 goals in round 22 as the Hawks play Richmond. Round 22 started with the Eagles proving too strong for Fitzroy under lights at the Wacker. But it came at a price, with Peter Sumic again damaging a hamstring. Carlton won its sixth match on the trot by belting Footscray by 82 points at Princess Park. Blues captain Stephen Kernahan was supreme, booting seven goals. At Cadinia Park, Geelong all but parcelled up top spot with a 93-point win over the Bears in a spiteful clash. The Hawks also had a big victory, hammering Richmond by 84 points. The 14th successive time Hawthorne had beaten the Tigers. Jason Dunstall kicked 12 goals in another dominant performance. The MCG, Collingwood had to withstand a spirited North Melbourne fight back. A goal to Severio Rocker, with 16 seconds of the match to go, kept the Pies in the six. But the bigger shock was Adelaide's fighting win over St Kilda, who saw the Saints' finals hopes crash. Hawthorne moved into the six at their expense. Round 22. West Coast versus Fitzroy. West Coast, A. McIntosh, one vote. West Coast, G. Evans, two votes. Fitzroy, P. Ruse, three votes. Richmond versus Hawthorne. Hawthorne, A. Gowers, one vote. Hawthorne, J. Taylor, two votes. Hawthorne, J. Dunstall, three votes. Carlton versus Footscray. Carlton, G. Williams, one vote. Carlton, M. Henner, two votes. Carlton, S. Kernahan, three votes. Geelong versus Brisbane. Geelong, B. Brownless, one vote. Geelong, S. Hanley, two votes. Geelong, A. McNish, three votes. North Melbourne versus Collingwood. North Melbourne, D. Crocker, one vote. Collingwood, M. McGuan, two votes. Collingwood, G. Pert, three votes. Sydney versus Melbourne. Sydney, P. Kelly, one vote. Melbourne, D. Swartz, two votes. Melbourne, B. Lovett, three votes. Adelaide versus St Kilda. St Kilda, N. Winmar, one vote. Adelaide, S. Lee, two votes. Adelaide, C. McDermott, three votes. Round 23 was highlighted by the outstanding contest between Carlton and Collingwood. The winner would secure a final spot. The loser had only one more chance to make the finals. All roads led to Waverley. The 77,357 fans turned up to watch the desperate Magpies claw their way to a 16-point victory after kicking five goals to one in the last quarter. The Bulldogs, who'd beaten the Eagles only once in nine matches, virtually won the match in the first quarter by booting three goals to nil. In fact, the Eagles' first goal didn't materialise until the 20-minute mark of the final quarter. The shock of the round was at Football Park, where the Crows thrashed Geelong, the league leader, by a staggering 91 points. Spearhead Scott Hodges provided a focal point, kicking 11 goals. And speaking of goals, five by St Kilda's Tony Lockett in his club's last home and away match of the season enabled the Saints to squeeze back into the six. Round 23. Carlton versus Collingwood. Collingwood, M. McGuan, one vote. Collingwood, G. Pert, two votes. Carlton, J. Madden, three votes. Essendon versus North Melbourne. Essendon, M. Thompson, one vote. Essendon, P. Hills, two votes. Essendon, G. Wanganine, three votes. Fitzroy versus Richmond. Fitzroy, J. Baldwin, 
one vote. Fitzroy, A. Lynch, two votes. Fitzroy, B. Stevens, three votes. Brisbane versus Sydney. Brisbane, D. Noonan, one vote. Brisbane, J. Hutton, two votes. Brisbane, M. Campbell, three votes. Melbourne versus St Kilda. St Kilda, N. Winmar, one vote. Melbourne, P. Road, two votes. St Kilda, N. Burke, three votes. Footscray versus West Coast. Footscray, S. Wallace, one vote. Footscray, T. Liberatore, two votes. Footscray, N. Callot, three votes. Adelaide versus Geelong. Adelaide, A. Jarman, one vote. Adelaide, A. McGuinness, two votes. Adelaide, S. Hodges, three votes. The start of round 24 saw the battle for the wooden spoon between the Swans and Richmond. Unfortunately for the Sydney Siders, they took the inauspicious prize when they lost their 15th straight match. It was also a sad night for Rover Stevie Wright, who retired after 246 games with the Swans. The Hawks needed to win to be assured of an 11th straight finals appearance, and for most of the afternoon, the result looked a formality. But the Demons hit back hard in the last quarter, get to narrow the margin to seven points. But a couple of good steals, and this heroic act by Paul Deere, enabled the reigning Premier to hold off the Demons. Collingwood won another close shave. This time the Pies came from behind to snatch a five-point victory against the Inform Crows. At Waverley Park, the football world bade farewell to two Essendon champions, Simon Madden and Terry Danaher. The pair with a total of 690 games were joined by another ex-captain, Tim Watson, in a lap of honour before the match. Finally, the season came down to the 165th and final home and away game of the year. Carlton needed to beat the Eagles at Subiaco to deny St Kilda a piece of the September action. But the home team started in sensational fashion, with seven goals to nil in the first quarter. The Blues went down fighting, but it wasn't enough, and the Saints sneaked back into the six. Round 24, the last round. Sydney versus Richmond. Richmond, S. Maxfield, one vote. Richmond, D. Honeybun, two votes. Richmond, M. Knights, three votes. Fitzroy versus North Melbourne. North Melbourne, W. Swass, one vote. North Melbourne, A. Stevens, two votes. North Melbourne, N. Carey, that's uh, correction, North Melbourne, W. Carey, three votes. Collingwood versus Adelaide. Adelaide, A. McGuinness, one vote. Collingwood, S. Russell, two votes. Adelaide, S. Wren, three votes. Footscray versus Brisbane. Footscray, T. Liberatore, one vote. Footscray, C. Grant, two votes. Footscray, N. Kellett, three votes. West Coast versus Carlton. Carlton, A. Kudafides, one vote. West Coast, D. Lamb, two votes. West Coast, A. Evans, three votes. Geelong versus Essendon. Geelong, B. Brownless, one vote. Geelong, P. Couch, two votes. Essendon, C. Danaher, three votes. This is the last game, Melbourne versus Hawthorne. Melbourne, A. Lovell, one vote. Hawthorne, D. Pritchard, two votes. Hawthorne, J. Taylor, three votes. I declare Scott Wine the winner of the 1992 Brownlow medal.
two Brownlow medalists together, livers and wine. Well, every now and then I think we're all guilty of hyperbole, but I think it's fair to say that tonight football salutes its newest champion, the Brownlow medalist. It's my pleasure now to reintroduce Ross Oakley, the chairman of the AFL Commission, for the official presentation of the Brownlow medal. Well, ladies and gentlemen, at 22 years of age, I think Scott has already matured into one of the great ruckmen that uh, Australian football has seen. Scott, uh, this is a particular pleasure for me, being a representative of the Footscray Football Club. It's really a magnificent year you've had, and uh, I, uh, I really do have great pleasure in hanging this round your neck as the 1992 Brownlow medalist. Well done. Would you uh, charge your glasses, please, and be upstanding to drink a toast to our newest Brownlow medalist, Scott Wine. To Scott Wine. Three cheers. A bit. A bit. A bit. Congratulations, Scotty. Well done. Come in, mate. See you. Um... Scotty, the last uh, Footscray player I interviewed up here was a bit shorter than you when he won the Brownlow medal. <laughs> I've been looking for a box in the last uh, three or four minutes to try and stand on. Congratulations. You're still shaking a bit, mate. Oh, I can't believe it. It's just uh, a couple of years ago I saw Libra up here accepting the award and it's something I always dreamed of and uh, it's just a dream come true. Well, last year Jim Steins went through the ordeal of being an overwhelming favourite on the day of the Brownlow medal, and for many weeks before, you were the favourite, but it was a wide-open betting uh, event this year. What were your feelings like today, coming tonight? Uh, I just, as I said, I just wanted to come along, enjoy the night and see what happens, and I'm happy about <laughs> Do you know what's happened so far, Scott? <laughs> Has it sunk in yet? No, not really. What about Terry Wheeler and his influence on the club this year, and uh, in the last couple of years? Terry and uh, all the players, geez, I want to thank you. You really helped me throughout the year. Terry's uh, got the side and the club, you know, just going. And this year we sort of developed from the you know, last few years from when the merger was uh, taking place. And hopefully next year, with the experience this year, we'll just continue on and get to the ultimate. It's a club full of character and full of characters. Doug Hawkins has won. It must have been a joy for you to play. With the Hawk in the last couple of years. He's not looking so good to know, though, is he? <laughs> no, the Hawk's not happy. He's trying to get some money on earlier on. He, uh, he couldn't, couldn't get a bet on. Who did he want to back you, Scotty? Obviously. And what about Libbers? What did he say to you a moment ago? It was a great moment to see two Brownlow medalists together, the short and the tall. Oh, Libbert, he's, uh, I, he tells me he makes me look good, basically. <laughs> I hit the ball and he gets there. So, yeah. The thigh injury came at the wrong time for you. You played each of the 22 matches. You missed out on the first finals match for Footscray and then were obviously restricted, particularly on Saturday against Geelong. A frustrating end to what's been a magnificent season on the field for you? Yes, uh, the Brisbane game was very disappointing because I did tear it then and uh, just to get that far through the season and first finals uh, for the club and just to miss out that first week was very frustrating and then not to be fully fit for the rest, just... Uh, was a bit disappointing, yes. I'm just wondering where your inspirations come from and where the, uh, where the uh, people have helped you come from. When you look back at Footscray, they've had some tremendous ruckmen in the past. John Schultz, who you've been uh, likened to, won the medal 10 years before you were born, and Gary Dempsey in 1975. 
Where's your support come from over the last few years? Um, a lot of people down in the club are going to hate me for saying this, but I suppose I've got a... stamps. <laughs> I've got, um, I mean, the last couple of years since he's been involved in the club, he's really helped me a lot. Um, he's just uh, showed me a few tricks and helped me out. But as I said, people down in the club are not going to be happy now because I've just given him a big rap. <laughs> and how do you celebrate, Scott? Don't know yet. <laughs> Find a few ways. Well, I'm sure you will. Congratulations. Thank you. Well done. A magnificent champion. Crown tonight from the Southern Cross. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the 1992 Brownlow medalist, Scott Wine from Footscray. We take a break. Back with more after this. Southern Cross in Melbourne, the Thomas Hardy Champagne is flowing freely here as people celebrate Scott Wine's performance tonight in winning the Brownlow medal. Earlier tonight, Scott received a double honour. He was one of 20 players named in the All-Australian team of 1992. The All-Australian team is named as part of the lead-up to the grand final. Once the result of outstanding playing carnival matches, the selection process rests on the shoulders of former greats. This year, the team was chosen by Ted Whitten, Mal Brown, Jared Healy, Ricky Quaid and Russell Ebert. And as usual, there were the odd surprises. Rookie of the Year Ben Hart, the 18-year-old Crow from Adelaide, was no shock in the back pocket. Captain of the Year, the versatile Paul Ruse is again All-Australian skipper. He was named a full-back. Essendon's 19-year-old Gavin Wanganeen edged out Hawthorne's Triple Premiership defender Andy Collins in the other pocket. The half-back line is a beauty. Mill Hanna capped off a great season for Carlton with selection on one flank. At centre-half back is Geelong's strong marking forward come backman Barry Stoneham. And alongside him is teammate Ken Hinckley, the one-time Lion retaining his coveted All-Australian status. 432 kicks, the most in the AFL this season, saw Mick McGowan an obvious selection, although he was slightly surprised to find himself named as a wingman. Darren Jarman can be one of the most spectacular players in the game. His favourite ahead of Footscray is Simon Atkins in the middle. Only one eagle in the team, that honour falling on Dean Kemp. His magnificent season earned him a spot on the wing. St Kilda's talented forward line was honoured. Robert Harvey named on a flank. At centre half forward, the man with the massive hands, Stewie Lowe. What a pair. On the other flank, with 69 goals to his credit and the reputation as the most dangerous man in the game, who else but Geelong's Gary Ablett. The second roving berth might well have gone to Tony Liberatore or Barry Mitchell, but the sheer pace and ability of Adelaide's Tony McGuinness saw him honoured. Coleman medalist Jason Dunstall was at full forward. 145 goals made sure of that, but just to be on the safe side, Tony Lockett, last year's choice, was named in the pocket. A deadly two-pronged attack. With 200 marks and a batch of media awards, Scotty Wine underlined the brilliant season he's had with the first ruck post. All-Australian vice-captain is Crows skipper Chris McDermott. The game's leading disposer farmed out the ball an incredible 720 times. Another South Australian this first rover, 1987 Brownlow medalist and Hawthorne star Johnny Platten. The interchange bench was honoured with the appointment of Carlton skipper Steve Kernahan. 83 goals and a great season were reasons enough. Alongside him, grand final skipper Mark Bairstow retains his place in the All-Australian 20. Terry Wheeler bowed out of the Premiership race by taking Footscray into third position, but tonight he was honoured as coach of the team. And the man in white? The panel went for 35-year-old Peter Carey. So looking back at the team, Ruse, All-Australian captain for the second year in a row at full-back, four others, Hinkley, Lockett, Lowe and Bairstow honoured again with selection. Last year, Hawthorne won the Premiership and not one player won All-Australian honours. This time, Geelong has four representatives and the West Coast won. One thing to note, there are seven South Australians in the team. And what a team it is. What a lineup. I bet you Terry Wheeler would love to get his hands on that 20. After this break, we check the team boards and the final leaders boards from the 1992 Brownlow. Welcome back to the Southern Cross in Melbourne, the 1992 Brownlow medalist Scott Wind of Footscray. What a great season it's been for the Bulldogs, but they're not in the grand final. That honour goes to West Coast. Maybe his name will be written on a Brownlow medal one day. With 12, Andrew Jarman with 11. 
Brisbane. The last year, McLean did particularly well. This year, only six for White, Bain, Leslie. They were the leading pole getters for Brisbane. For Carlton, a couple of surprises here. Kernahan and Hannah and also Bradley expected to do a little better. Dorotic with 12, the leading vote scorer for Carlton. Kernahan kicking 83 goals for the season at Collingwood. Scott Russell with 11 from Mickey Mabon, who took a long time to even get a single vote and then came home with a bit of a rush. Wright with nine. To Essendon and Derek Kickett had an outstanding middle part of the year. 13, Gavin Wanganeen, the 19-year-old, has been named in the All-Australian team tonight at 11. Buick and Salmon both with 10. From Essendon to Fitzroy, and I think Paul Ruse would be a bit disappointed with that. Just 10 votes. He's had a magnificent year. It looked to be his best chance yet of winning the Brownlow medal. Dundas with nine, a bit of a surprise. To Footscray, well, this was the story, wasn't it? Scott Wine with 20 votes. Tony Liberatore, well, he certainly comes under the umpire's eye. He won the medal in 1990. Nigel Kellett, a bit of a surprise with 12. And a surprise also that Simon Atkins received just seven after his brilliant season. From Footscray to Geelong. A lot of depth here. Hinkley had a superb year with 17. Best are always polls well 11. Ablett very, very good with 9. And won't they be important players in the grand final? Couch a former winner. From Geelong we go to Hawthorne, Dunstall. Well, you've got a feel for Jason. Five times he's been in the top 10. Three times in the top three. The second time he's been runner-up. 18. Darren Jum, ineligible 14, a brilliant player. Johnny Platten always does well with 11 from Hawthorne to Melbourne. Jim Steins won it last year. He was a tearaway winner in the end. He didn't have quite the season here. He was the leading pole getter with eight, but they had a disappointing season, the Demons. A change of coach next year now. North Melbourne. Wayne Schimmelbush still there. Wayne Kerry did very well with 14, but ineligible. Mashenko was a valuable player throughout the year. Some uh, Richmond, I should say. I was going to miss them for a moment. And no real move here at all. Campbell's been very good all year with three votes. Knights and Maxfield up the top. Some Kilda, well, Stuart Lowe gave them a great run for their money, but his best football was in the first 14 rounds. Harvey and Lockett and Burke were all very, very good. Sydney, Paul Kelly's been their best and fairest. Well, tonight he scored four votes. Uh, Brad Tunbridge started the season very well. Dale Lewis, they both had eight. And West Coast, one of the grand finalists, Chris Bain Waring and Glenn Jakovic with ten each. You can see what a team they are because nobody's right up near the uh, top, yet they've got such depth. Matera, Lamb, Kemp and McIntosh. Now to the leaders' board. Scott Wine is the Brownlow medalist of 1992. He enjoy, enjoys the fact that he now is on the famous list of Brownlow medalists. Jason Dunstall, the runner-up, and Ken Hinckley, third. Then Lowe with 16, Jarman, 14, Carey, 14, Kickett, 13, and Harvey on 12. They were the top eight, well, Harvey equaled with Dorotic and Wren, both 12. Lugatore, gee, Footscray did well, didn't they? And Kellett, both 12. And Geelong, Bairstow, 11. Platten, 11 from Hawthorne. Gleeson from Carlton having his best season and Wanganeen of Essendon. So the story tonight has been that Scott Wine has won the Brownlow medal for 1992. Jason Dunstall with 139 goals in the regular season, 145 in total as the runner-up. And Ken Hinckley, that lacks a days ago.